B Rising Early Access is coming May 17th, and I wanted to cover a few of the unique systems coming out to help get you all prepared for this fantastic survival game. Thus, here we are with the second episode of V Rising 101. Before we get into this, I do want to say that I have not had the chance to play this game in any of the testing phases yet, which is both a good and bad thing. Bad because it sucks as I've really been wanting to play the game, but good because it's under NDA so I couldn't speak about it and it helps me avoid potentially saying things I'm not allowed to. All this information comes from blogs from developers and videos they have published. So without further ado, today we are going to cover the castle system, which for those who aren't aware is the building mechanic within this game. Every vampire lord needs a castle to rule from, and while we may not have scientific teleporting walking castles like in Castlevania, yet, there's a lot of amazing mechanics in developing your stronghold and it's important to understand it. You'll begin in the ruins of a castle, but piece by piece, wall by wall, you will create your home and fill it with personalized decorations, workstations, and servants to help you operate and defend it. Players will unlock new technology and gear in their castle. Expanding the castle and upgrading its rooms will allow players to access a wider variety of equipment. The more the castle grows, the more there will be to discover. You won't be alone though, as you can share your castle with your clan, which can be up to 4 people, so you can team up to create it and grow it. And there could be up to 50 castles on the map, so larger servers mean more estates to compete with. So let's go ahead and get started with the basics. What makes the castle? The core of it is going to be your castle heart, the living, beating heart of your territory. This was previously called the Blood Well, if you recognize that name. The developers explained the best by saying, The castle heart acts as a point to feed blood into, reinforcing the castle structure and preventing it from falling into disrepair. While the castle heart is adequately fed and maintained, your crafting stations will not only operate more effectively, but the castle defenses will be significantly more challenging to assail from the outside. Its walls will be more difficult to harm and even regenerate their structure at a rate that makes it impossible to break in with claws or simple weapons alone. As long as you maintain the castle heart, breaking in will be nearly impossible without an impressive coordinated effort and significant dedicated resources. No matter what the Avenger in the world of Vardaron, it will always lead back to your domain. The place to return to store your loot and have it made into valuable tools to rise up in power. When you die, you return to your coffin to shake off the grave dust and plan for devious revenge. It's a safe place to share with Fang brothers and sisters and revel in victories after a long night's hunt. Maintaining this castle heart will be the most important thing you will want to do to secure your stronghold to allow you to build amazing craft stations, decorations, and more. So what can you build? First off, there are the craft stations. We don't know too much about what type of craft stations there are, but it can be assumed that there will be craft stations for making slash upgrading weapons, armors, and spells, maybe additionally brewing potions. The exciting part, in my opinion, is the decorations you can create. As you can see from this screenshot here, there are seven categories of construction available. Fundamentals, outdoor, castle, production, storage, lighting, and decoration. While the extent of these categories haven't been revealed, we can let our imagination run wild with all the possibilities that these will have. We do get a taste of the possibilities here. From the doorway to the throne room are many opportunities to display a sense of respectability and style. Close to the finest archways in all the far main, the most glorious gallery in the silver light, or the luscious garden in the fertile hills of Dunley. Line your coffin's chamber with tinted windows and lush drapery. Roll out the red, amethyst, pristine white, or pitch black carpeting. Line the walls with torches and braziers that burn bright with every color under the sky. Maybe you want to take all these tools and craft a library from which to gather all the dark secrets of the continent. Create the perfect prison for the most precious human pets. Perhaps make a grand dining hall to meet with clanmates and discuss the brood's next conquest? Or maybe you've taken the liking to necromancy and want to construct a vast graveyard filled with skeletons, ghouls, and other horrors. 
To show off some of the cool things you can build, I'm going to let this video play a bit of a slideshow of various castle builds and decorations that we've seen. Additionally, within your castle, you will retain your servants. You gain servants out in the world by weakening humans enough to use magic to bend them to your will and send them back to your castle. You will then be struck with a decision, food or purpose. For those who you deem as being needed to feast on for power, see my blood system explanation for more details there, you'll send them to your cages to be repetitively feasted upon. You'll have a happiness system here to manage, as if the captured human remains happy, you'll be able to feed upon them more often, and if they have some sort of beneficial blood type, that might come in frequent handiness, as you'll be able to have it on hand whenever you need it. The other option that they are not food is to make them your servant. You'll gift them a coffin within your abode and allow them to suffer the sweet agony of undeath and eternal servitude. These servants can be used to protect your castle when it's under attack, to be sent out on missions to gather supplies, or act as a helping hand with crafting. Thralls provide another dimension to the castle, a sense of activity and unlife that adds to the feeling of being a dark overseer commanding the lessers to further their evil goals. Lastly, as we mentioned, raiding will be a thing in this game. Before we go into this, just know this will be an optional thing depending on what kind of server you run. Based on this, the extent of which your castle can be raided may vary, and you should decide what type of server you want to be on if you even want it to be damaged. Nothing wrong with wanting to play this game purely PvE. As mentioned before, if you retain the strength of your castle heart, then it will be incredibly difficult for people to raid your home. As the dev stated, when the castle heart is well fed, other vampires will find it challenging to get in. As long as it's secured and fortified, it should take some extra effort for someone to break through. Castles will heal themselves over time if they prove unsuccessful or do minor damage. Unless the enemy can do a lot of target destruction over a short period, it will be like they never tried to attack. So keep that castle heart fed and you'll be just fine. And yeah, those are the basics of the castle system in V Rising. Hope you enjoyed this little lesson and as a reminder, I've yet to play the closed alphas and this is purely based off of dev blogs and videos they've released, so hopefully it'll remain accurate. Either way, can't wait to see you in Vardaran.